Hello everyone. Today we'll be talking about relative motion analysis, the acceleration component. We talked about the relative analysis for the velocity. So VB is the same as the velocity of point A plus the relative velocity between the two points. And you need to remember that for rigid body, when we, whenever we are talking about the relative velocity or relative acceleration, we are talking about two points on the same rigid body. So it's different than what we talked about relative velocity and acceleration for a particle. So the first component is the translation component. And the second component is related to the rotational aspect of the rigid body. Uh, and if we only have translation, then the velocity at two points or at any point on a rigid body would be the same. If we have a rotational component as well, if our rigid body is rotating, then different points on our rigid body are going to have different velocity depending on their location. So for Acceleration, the equation is very similar, is AB is the same as AA plus the relative velocity between the two. But for acceleration, we need to remember that the acceleration has two components, the tangential component and the normal component. So if we have angular acceleration of alpha, Point A, for point B, we have R alpha and R omega square. So we have two components of acceleration. So AB is AA, which for this example that I'm drawing is, is zero, but in general, acceleration at A uh, is not zero. So we have the tangential component plus the normal component. The tangential component of acceleration in a vector formulation is alpha AB cross or B with respect to A. And the normal component B omega cross, let's name it omega AB cross omega AB or RB with respect to A. So omega R, instead of omega R, we can write velocity. So this component, BR, V, BA, the velocity of B with respect to A. So acceleration has two components. These are the vector formulation for, for acceleration here and this component. Also, we can use scalar equation. Scalar, as the name suggests, we can only get the magnitude, so R alpha. And then we have to find a direction by visual inspection, by looking at our problem and saying that, okay, if this is R alpha, and then if you have this angle at theta, so this angle between the two would be theta and then find a component in X and Y direction if you are using scalar formulation. So for a scalar formulation, the tangential component is R alpha and the normal component is R omega squared. Or this one we know that is the opposite direction of R. So if we just want to change this into a vector formulation, it might be easier to just write negative omega squared or B with respect to A. So omega squared is a scalar, RBA is a vector. So we are not talking about a dot product or cross product. It's just a scalar times a vector. So this equation shows us that the direction of omega does not matter because it's squared. So regardless whether the direction is clockwise or counterclockwise, the acceleration would be the opposite direction of RBA because of this negative sign. 
And in some problems, it's very difficult to uh, identify the direction of omega and alpha. So direction of omega and, 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 of, and alpha could be assumed. And uh, if you find a negative value, which means that the direction that we assumed is incorrect. After finding the omega and alpha, then we know what would be the actual direction for each. So for acceleration equation, you need to remember we have two components. So we wrote the two components for A, B with respect to A, but even A, B and A, A can have two components as well. Whenever we are talking about acceleration, unless either alpha or omega is zero, then we have two components that we, we need to include in our equation, our formulation. And uh, we have the choice of using a scalar and then look at the problem and saying that, okay, our alpha is in this direction and then our omega is towards, is the negative direction of R or towards the center. And then by visual inspection, we write the vector formulation. Or from the very beginning, we use cross product and then cross product will give us a vector at the end. 